What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video for the AI for Aspiring Lectures, sorry, Researchers lecture series. In this series, or in this lecture, we're going to be going over the SVM, or Support Vector Machine, for the IRIS dataset. Now you might recognize the IRIS dataset because we already worked with it before. Now, if you don't remember what it is, I'll be going over that in just one second. But as always, the first thing we're going to do is import the libraries. So the first thing that we're going to import is, as usual, import NumPy as np, import our pandas library for the kind of data frames and kind of visualizing the data, import our matplotlib, this is once again, I guess, visualizing the data more graphically, then from sklearn, import data sets. Now, data sets is just so that we can retrieve the iris data set. Then we're going to say from sklearn dot model selection, import the test tra or train test split. And basically what this is, is it's just whenever we want to train our model, uh, we want to basically split our data into a training data set and a testing data set so that we can later come back to our model and see, well, based on the testing data set, how well did our model actually learn? And you'll see that how it's used specifically uh, later on in this video. All right, so from sklearn, import SVM, fairly self-explanatory. That is the library for the support vector machine. And this last library is a little unorthodox. I, not gonna lie, found it on Stack Overflow. But basically with SVMs, you're going to want to visualize the data that the SVM uh, is giving back or kind of, especially in our case, which we're using a classification or we're doing a classification with SVMs. We wanna see, well, we go on to kind of draw out the lines that kind of um, demarcate between the different classes of flowers for our iris data set and, and this last library essentially just makes it significantly easier to do that so so i'll just be importing that so it's called mlx tend dot plotting import plot decision regions right and so let's run that cool then we're going to say now iris iris is equal to our data sets dot load iris now once again fairly self self-explanatory what this does it's just taking from that sklearn library from data sets taking in the iris data set and storing it as iris so let's go ahead and run that now we're going to say iris underscore df is equal to pd dot data frame data frame and then iris dot data and then for our columns, we're going to say iris dot feature names. So basically what this is doing is it's just we want to visualize or kind of see in a table tabular format the data for the iris data set. And once again, all we're doing is using pandas and kind of taking it in as a data frame. And that's why it's called iris underscore df, df for data frame. And we're just going to be printing the head of this data frame. So we're going to say iris underscore df dot head and see what that gives. Awesome. So basically what this is, is if you already watched the previous video on iris data set, you already know what this is really doing. The iris data set basically contains four different uh, features, the sepal length, the sepal width, petal length, and petal width that each describe a type of iris flower each describe an iris flower and based on the values for these four different features you basically are classifying the the plant or the iris into three different categories now i forgot exactly what classifications or what the names are but for all purposes or for our purposes we're just going to assume class zero class one and class two awesome so next what we're going to do is we are going to say our sepal length so in this video, all we're really going to be caring about is the sepal length and the petal length. So we're going to call it iris and then data. And we're going to get all the rows from column zero, right? So what that means is all of these values right here in this first column, which is the sepal length. And we're going to store that in our sepal length variable. Then we're going to say petal underscore length is equal to iris, oops, iris, and same thing, data. Now, as you might have already guessed, since we're doing petal length, this is going to be colon, comma, and this is the kind of third row or index two column. So 
we're going to be taking this row, the pedal length, and storing that as pedal length. So let's go ahead and give that a run. Now what I want to do is basically just plot this, kind of to show you uh, exactly how the sepal length and pedal length look in terms just like generally. And so what we'll do is we'll say C is equal to iris and then target. So basically what this is doing is C is just kind of the classes um, because we have essentially three classes or zero, one, two, you'll see that it, whenever we plot it, it'll have three different classes uh, accordingly. And so let's say plt.scatter, scatter, and then sepal length, pedal length, pedal length, and then C is equal to C, so, right? That's just the class is equal to C, which is the iris target. Then we're going to say plt.x, oops, x label, and we're going to call this our sepal length. And then similarly, we're going to go ahead and do plt.y label, and we're going to call that our pedal length. And then finally, we're just going to say plt.show, right? So this is just going to show and plot our scatter plot that we want to see. And here you can see that. So basically, what this is showing is that, well, these are the values for the sepal length and petal length for this class of flowers. I, I don't know exactly what it's showing, but this class of flowers because they're all the same color, right? And similarly, the, the sepal length and petal length for this class of flowers are, are around this range. And then finally, for the upper like lengths for the sepal and petal, it's going to be this final class of, of flowers. And you can kind of see how there are these clear classifications. Obviously, over here, these are kind of their own little bubble over here. And you see uh, over here, maybe it's a little bit of kind of um, overlap. But for the, for the most part, for the majority, it really is on its own little bubble. You see this yellow kind of area over here and this kind of teal or blue area right here, sorry, and all the way at the bottom, this purple area, right? And, and so the whole idea of the SVM is, is to be able to kind of break these into three different groups and, and to classify them properly. And so we're going to see how exactly that is coded. Okay, so now that we have all this done, what we're going to do is actually prepare the, the data for our SVM. Now we're going to say x is equal to np dot column stack. And I'll explain exactly what that is doing and why we're using it in just one second, but we're going to say sepal length and pedal length. Okay, so basically what we're doing here in the column stack is, is right now with sepal length and pedal length, we have two different arrays. But all we're really doing is we're just kind of like meshing them together into one array so that whenever we feed that into the SVM, uh, it, it's going to be reading in essentially one array of these two different values as opposed to two different arrays. Uh, and so this way is the, the proper way to do it. So then we're going to say y is equal to iris dot target. And once again, all that's really doing is it's just kind of the target numbers for each of these x values is going to be stored in, in here. Oh, whoops. Okay, <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to use that train test split and basically break up our x or x data set and y data set into the x train x test, y train, y test. So you might know already how to do this in the previous video. We're just going to do the exact same thing over here. We're just going to say x train, x test, y train, y test is equal to train underscore test underscore split and we're just going to give it our two variables x y and this is going to be the test size whoops test size is equal to 0 0.2 now all that's really saying is that 20 percent of the data from here is going to be stored in the x test and y test and the remaining is going to be used for actually training training the model right and so let's go ahead and give that a run okay Next, what we're going to do is actually create now the SVM or the classification SVM. And so the way we're going to do that is by saying CLF is equal to SVM dot SVC. SVC just means support vector classifier. And then we're going to give it a kernel. Kernel is equal. So in this case, there's we're just going to use linear. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are other kernels. I believe there's a poly kernel, which basically just means for uh, like 
it's kind of predicting on higher degrees as opposed to just one degree. So you could say like uh, three degrees or like x cubed or x to the power of four or so on and so forth. And that may or may not give uh, more accurate results. It probably will give more accurate results. But feel free to check that out um, if you want to go check that out. I think on the just online, see exactly what type of kernels are, feel free. But for now, we're just going to be using the linear kernel. And we're going to be saying C is equal to, we're going to say C is equal to 1, because that is essentially the default value for this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say clf.fit, and then we're going to fit it to the x train and the y train. Now, as always, when we're fitting or training a model, we want to always feed in the X train and Y train, right? Because if we're feeding in the X test, Y test, and then later go on to kind of predict on the X test, Y test, you might get more skewed results because it's already seen this data. The whole point of the X test, Y test is to kind of predict it on data that hasn't been seen already. And so that's why we initially feed it the X train and the Y train. And so over here, you'll see this classification dot fit x train y train. So let's go ahead and give that a run. Awesome. Okay. Now, what we want to do, one second, let me see this. Okay. Now, all we want to do is basically say clf dot score. And so what that's going to give us is now the actual, oh, whoops, whoops, my bad. <laughs> this is actually supposed to take in a couple parameters. So we're going to pass in our X test and our Y test and see what it gives. Awesome. So it gives a 0.9. Now, what that basically means is that 90% of the time it's correctly predicting on this X test and Y test when we trained it with our X train and Y train. Okay, so now that that's good, what we're going to be doing is actually plotting the, the, the SVM. Or, and I want to show you visually how this SVM actually trained itself. And so what we're going to be doing is using that kind of weird library up here that I found. And, and this, once again, is just for uh, kind of ease in, in terms of showing you this video. The whole point of this is to show you the, the actually how the SVM classified it. And so we're just gonna be using that. So we're gonna say plot and then decision regions. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say our X test, our Y is equal, or let's set that actually to X is equal to X test. Y is equal to now Y test, Y test. And then we're gonna pass in our classification. Right, which is our CLF. So we're going to say CLF is equal to CLF and legend is equal to one. Now, what that means is it's just going to keep the legend on the top right. You can kind of use different numbers for that depending on where exactly you want the legend. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and print that. Oh, let's see. I've got an un. Oh, this should be uppercase, I believe. Yes, there you go. Okay, awesome. So as you can see here, clearly, you can kind of see this demarcation right about here and, and obviously this other demarcation about here. And what it's doing is it's saying that the SVM classified this area as blue, which it got all correct, and that's really good. Now, it, it, SVM is similarly classifying this area as orange, which is a different class, which once again, as you can see, a lot of the things or a lot of the flowers that it classified in this area are also orange triangles. And so that's really good. And similarly, up here, it is predicting green, which you see these green circles. And once again, really good. Now, this is an X test, Y test, um, just for kind of curiosity sake, you can also do this for the X train and Y train just to see how exactly it'll look. Let's do that. Actually, before we do that as well, let's kind of see what the score was for if we do it on the X test, Y test, or sorry, X train, Y train. So let's give it X, pass in X train and let's pass in Y train and see what the score is. Awesome. So you see a score of 0 0.966, which is really high, which means that it accurately predicted 96.7 approximately percent of the data points. And so hopefully that will be accurately shown over here. And as you can see, it actually is pretty, pretty accurate, at least on the training data sets. And that's 
to be to be known, right? Because when you're whenever you're running it on the training data set, that's the values that the SVM is first going to see, and so it's going to classify it more properly, right? And so you see once again a majority of the blues here in the bottom are actually all the blues. And similarly, a majority of the greens in the green section and majority, if not all, I believe there's this one right here that's kind of on the verge, but majority of the oranges on or where they're supposed to be. And so you see that this SVM is actually predicting with very high accuracy. Now, I implore you that you also go check out some of the other kernels, because right now, as you can see, especially with these demarcations, they're all straight lines. But it is possible that you could do different things with them, or you can kind of curve around. Maybe right about here, you could say that there's uh, another um, another class, right? Instead of the whole line coming around here, it could kind of be this little area right there. And also, right now, all I'm doing is sepal length and petal length. But you can also do other things. So what we can do is we can change it up, right? So instead of like the length, so let's try the width. Now, just for simplicity, I won't change these variables, but just know instead of sepal length, I'm now using sepal width. And same thing, instead of petal length, I'll just be using petal width. And this is just for, once again, curiosity reasons, just to see exactly how it would turn out. And so let's go ahead, give that a run. And so you see these, it automatically gave us a completely different graph here, right? Because now the variables that we're using are different. So this should be, I guess, sepal width, and this should be petal width. But you see this this graph is, is completely different. And now let's kind of see how, how well our SVM actually trains on these two different variables. So let's go ahead, give that a run, just kind of run all of these. And actually, now that we see this CLF.score, it's actually giving us a much better score of 96.7%. And this is on the testing data set. So let's print that out. Awesome. So you see this right here. These are the different demarcations, the blues, the oranges, and the greens. Once again, very separated, um, properly separated. Now let's do the train. So over here now we're seeing a 95.83-ish percent on the training data set. And then we can print out the same. But you see that for the most part, it is actually like correctly or accurately predicting where these different irises are or how these different iris flowers are classified and so go out kind of test or like tread the waters kind of see exactly what you can change with the svc maybe change the kernel maybe maybe possibly change this there's obviously a bunch of different variables that you can go back and change as well uh kind of see if you can uh, go ahead plot them uh, maybe try these different uh different uh, sorry different um, features uh, versus different, like what feature versus what feature. There's a lot of things that you can try with this or maybe a completely different data set. And, and so that's basically the whole overarching view of SVMs for classification. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. I, I more than welcome them and I'm happy to make a video if, if I really like a question or if it's a really important question that I think should be covered as well. But otherwise, if you like the content, content make sure to subscribe, uh, like, share, comment once again, and I can't wait to see you next time.